things we need to improve on still. Uh, excited about this coming season and uh, like always, you know, there's there's stuff to work on and get better at. It's just the life of uh, an NFL coach and player. How has it been for the last couple of years knowing that these guys have kind of had a revolving door at right tackle and you know, pretty much headed in that direction with Jonah probably being your free agent? Um, how do you feel about having to reassess that kind of thing every year? What have you learned and how do you feel about going into that situation going into your day? Um, I mean, it's it's not ideal, obviously. You, you'd love to have had a guy that you can plug in two or three years ago that you knew was going to be there for the next, you know, ten years. But that's again part of the business, part of the league. It's something that uh, you know, if you sign an older guy, you're hoping to find a young guy to step up and develop as well. So I think we're looking at all all those options, and we'll see where this uh, league offseason takes us. How hard for it is, is it? get a plug and play rookie at, at a, a tackle spot starting right away, regardless of where you pick him, even if it is a Yeah, I think that's hard regardless of his position. I mean it's just in the NFL it's it's a it's an adjustment. Um it's uh I mean obviously you get a guy uh somewhere in the top ten, you're you're hoping it's gonna be a lot smoother transition, but uh I've heard debates say after the 12th pick of the draft, I mean, what's the difference between 13 and 32? It's really, it's kind of that that uh, demarcation line, if you will, of guys who are, you know, have a more smoother transition in regards to position. But yeah, no, it's it's not a walk in the park for sure. Have you ever had a rookie tackle on opening day? Dwayne Brown, when I was in Houston years ago, um, comes to mind. Rookie tackles. Becton, yep. He's tied to the opener. Yeah, I think so. I think I so. I guess it just doesn't happen a lot, though, right? I mean, it just doesn't. Uh, I mean, you guys are probably no more than me. You guys seem to be all over those types of stats. That's something <laughs> I study. So, but uh, no, it's. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's not easy. It's everything else we do in this business. So, <laughs> is the challenge more physical or mental for those rookies to step in and? All the above. I mean, the game's faster. The opponents they're going against are a lot more technically sound and faster. They're stronger. The game's more complex. The pressures that they'll see is more complex. The volume from a playbook standpoint is more complex. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit of a difference. Well, if they're going to be on the edge, it's going to start with their feet. They got to have range. Got to have a very quick feet. Length helps. Length will help you overcome some of your deficiencies in, in your feet, your athleticism. Balance is a big one. Um, being able to bend is a big one. Um, you know, out there on the edge in space, you, you, you're going to face uh, the cream of the crop as far as what this league has to offer. You know, left side, right side is irrelevant these days. Um, I'm sure all the guys that faced the Watt kid in Pittsburgh, you know, think that uh, they're, they're facing the elite just as much as the, everyone faces the other guy in Cleveland on the left side. So either side is going to be uh, important. It's not like it, what it used to be back in the day. Left side is kind of the premier, and it's not that way anymore. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but in a perfect world, are you able to add a, a proven veteran in free agency to potentially be there and then also add in the draft? That, that's a great question for for Duke. I mean, I, <laughs> add a veteran free agency. I, that's that's not my not, not my deal. So it'd be great, but that's not my role. That's probably a good question for Duke. How much of a role do you have when you guys bring free agents in and they're talking to them? They're coming on a visit, and you know, if it's a tackle, whatever it is. Yeah, they'll ask my opinion and, and give my two cents worth, and or we'll we'll stack and grade guys. Here's a group of guys to grade and tell us wh where you where you rank them, um, and that kind of stuff for feedback and. Then they'll make their decision. But do you talk to the free agent? Do you like when yeah. he comes in on a visit? And yeah. So how tricky is that to maybe sell a guy where hey we we want to sign you, but we also might draft your replacement a month later. Uh, I mean it's I mean the the word tricky is 
I mean, that's the business. I mean, guys who've been in the league long enough know it's just the way free agency comes first, the draft comes second. I mean, I, I will say this. Players these days are, are not clueless. They're smart. They've been educated on the business. Um, so that's, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, and they're, you know, all, all the guys usually want to have chances to compete. So whether that's with a, a veteran or a rookie or somewhere in between. So, uh, but no, I don't, I don't think that's anything tricky. I mean, players want you to be honest with them. And it's, if it makes dollars and cents for them, they have a chance to, to compete. Then, and you're honest with those guys. I mean, that's all you can do and all you can be. Have you started stacking with free agents? What's have you, that? Have you started stacking with free agents or not yet? Yeah, I've graded a few guys and put them in order. I'm not going to list no. or rank any of them. But, sure. but yeah, we, we, we started that process. Are there other traits that they have in common that when you look at guys that you really feel like fit y'all scheme really well uh, and what you like out of offensive linemen, other things that they have in common? At a specific position or just in generally speaking? Generally speaking. I don't know how you put it. I mean, Generally speaking, good traits for all positions on the line are going to be kind of across the board. So it's not like we're looking for something unique in that regards. I mean, you want someone who's uh, tough, line one, mentally tough, more importantly than anything else. Um, guy who's smart, like I mentioned before, he's got good length, he's got good feet, he can bend, uh, he can move, he accelerates his feet on contact, all that kind of stuff. He loves ball, it shows. As far as in your interview, it shows on tape how he finishes, how he plays. Um, so those are kind of common stuff. How would you, how would you grade the, uh, the trio internal, uh, on the interior between Ted, Cordell, and Alex when they've been healthy? How do you feel like they've worked as a group? How, I said it one more time. Just the middle. Is that, is that even a fair way to, to describe the trio internally, the left guard, center, right guard? How yep. do you feel like y'all have been on the interior in terms of the pass blocking role? Uh, some good and some bad. I mean, I like a lot of things that we've been doing, but each guy's got an area to improve on. How, how would you characterize the work of Cordell? Speaking of a guy that's yeah. big, tall, yeah. tough, mentally. He, he took a step forward last year and grew some. I'd like to see it uh, do that even more this year, you know? <laughs> so he's, he's, I think he finished the year going in the right direction. Specific. Maybe a little slower start than we had hoped. Specifically in the pass blocking game, is that where he, his growth opportunity was probably the, the greatest? Um, I mean, I, I, I guess you could say that. I don't want to neglect his growth in the run game. I mean, he can still grow a lot in the run game as well, too. So, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, him using his hands and and working on a variety of punch or hand strikes have improved over the course of last year. And I think his biggest thing is is still improving his foot speed. He he's not naturally, uh, you know. Fast twitch, if you will, with his foot quicks. He's he's got to improve or be dialed in his margin for error and everything else to improve how fast he does play with his feet. It should make it that much more important with everything else. So he plays fast, not slower, with in that area. So, coach, how uh, you've been coaching this league a long time now? It's been what sixteen years, maybe something like that. I mean, you would know better than me. <laughs> how has the how is coaching how is scouting the tackle position changed? over that time with the, with, with the way the college game has changed? Has it, has, has it been tough for the projection guys? Uh, the biggest change is they don't play as much and they come out a lot earlier, except for this COVID hiccup where guys are getting six years of eligibility and some are taking it. And you could argue the whole NIL is making them financially want to stay in. It's a whole other discussion. But yeah. the biggest change that I've seen is they, they come out younger. I mean, we've had guys that 20 and just turning 21. You know, like they're going, huh? And you're, you know, I mean, it's amazing to me that just the just the experience, just sure. what they have been able to experience and, and be taught in college, just just the time on the job is not, is not there what it used to be. Yeah, I mean, but the fact that it's kind of a different game now, the college game is so much more different than the pro game. Does that does that make it tough? Is that one of the positions? It depends on the 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 schools, the offensive systems that they they play in. Uh, I mean, they're throwing around as much as anybody in college that we do in the league now. But uh, you'll the simplistic thing of just being in a three-point stance, you can argue, is one thing that's yeah. kind of something a lot of these guys are never in anymore, you know, very rarely uh, in college. So that's something that's a little unique. But uh, more and more teams in the NFL, we're, I mean, we're just as much, as much as we're in the gun, we're going to be in a two-point stance 
often as well. So it's you know, I'm trying to think of some other things that might be yeah. different that but way. But I mean, uh, th um, I guess it's I guess it's intangibles and size and movement. I guess in the end, right? I mean, it's a yeah. Th I mean, th the bottom line: who makes it in this league? To me, it's it's the intangibles. It's not it's not what you see on tape. It's having to get get to know the kid. So, I mean, I get 15 minutes with, with these guys officially here, then I get the, a couple hour, one hour Zooms. I mean, it's everything you can get, whether it's resources from the school or who's coached them in the past or whatnot to get what makes this kid tick. That, that's a differentiator. It's their intangibles by far. It's not what you see on a lot of guys that come here with all the talent in the world and they get drafted in the first three rounds because of it, but they drift away and they disappear. And you get guys who were late round draft picks because you had the bare minimum talent, but they had all the other stuff off the charts. So they carve out a little career for themselves, whether it's backup role players or they develop into starters or whatever that is. Or some of those guys even are wearing golden jackets, you know. There, there are guys who are you know, on y'all's roster who have been drafted the last couple of years, but they haven't been, really been able to make an impact in the back of the room, even when guys went down. Why do you think that's been the case, that they just haven't been able to kind of establish themselves even in a, in a role spot in certain situations? Um, some of the young guys you have names of you're thinking about? I mean, you know, like, like Jackson Corman and, you know, uh, Deontay, uh, you know, I don't know if Trent is placed on the roster. He is? Okay, thank you. So are those guys, like, uh, they just haven't been able to kind of really establish themselves in the back of the room here for a few years? Uh, what do you mean by establish themselves? Like, like for example, if a guy goes down, like, you know, like Cody ended up becoming the next tackle, the next guy up. Who right. Signed free agency. Right. Um, Max Sharpens had a lot of good reps as a guy who got in free agency. Right. The guys who drafted, however, have not been able to beat those other guys out for those spots. Right. Those guys came in and, and beat them out. Correct. So Why those guys were backup players, and, well, they outperformed them. I don't know. I mean, what else is there to well, say? Well, they, they played better. Yeah. But is there, so, is there something in common that just – like in terms of the intangibles, is there anything that when you look back at maybe why they they were beaten out? Is it just simply a performance thing, or are there other things that maybe haven't enabled them to be as successful as, as maybe y'all would have hoped? Uh, they just, they got beat out. I, I'm not sure what you're I mean, looking I mean, for. What there. he's trying to ask is, have you what have you guys looked back at the last couple of years in terms of drafting offensive linemen and found any reason why you haven't been able to get other than other than Cordell enough starting? offensive linemen as opposed to having to go out and buy free agents to have the talent that they have from the offensive line? Um, I don't have an answer for you specific to that. Uh, you've had opportunities and other guys have won the job. So I don't know what else to tell you. I think how closely have you looked at this class? Are you deep into that at all? or it, I'm early in it. Um, yeah. I've got a Obviously, some interviews with guys that we're doing in the formals that I've watched more tape on than some of the other guys I've watched yet. So I mean, a lot of talk about that class being at the top yeah. and deep. Is this yeah. as deep as you've seen as far as guys that are considered possible first-round picks at that position? There's been kind of a, it's a scarcity, it seems like, a lot, in a lot of ways in recent years, people looking for those types of uh, players. Yeah, when Beckton came out, there was five guys yeah. that all – were considered, you can debate and argue who was ranked those five guys, and uh, they were all worthy of an early first round pick. I, I think this year seems to be kind of shaken out to a similar year. So, that, what was that, 2019, 20? Yeah. Whenever that was. How, so. I, don't know how the, I don't know how the Jets worked. How involved were you in the drafting of Becton? I mean, I don't know if there are like personnel people who are like, we don't care about the coach's opinion, or, or that was a thing where, you know, that was a guy you're like, I want this guy. Yeah, it's the process usually where I've been is the scouts have grades, the coaches have grades, you meet, you debate, you rank. We go down, re rank them the way we feel strongly about it. Personnel ranks guys how they feel strongly about it, and all the decision makers mm -hmm. take all that and come out with their final decision. That seems to be the status quo in the league. There might be some variances off of that. I don't know. I mean, I've worked at enough places to know. Yeah. and visit with enough coaches to know that's kind of typically what works across the league. What did we seem to be no different. Sorry. What, what did you think going on there his first year as a, as a player? Uh, he had some up and down stuff. I think he'd tell you that as well. Uh, 
be great to, uh, I know he's been in the off season, been at the facility this off season already working out. So uh, I'm excited to do a little bit more with him this off season a little earlier. Um, but he's a guy that uh, I think has some, uh, got a lot of good football ahead of him. And I think he was maybe a little disappointed in, in how he came out. I think he's got uh, a lot of ability, obviously, and maybe he can clean up a couple things, help him get a little bit cleaner on some of his technical stuff. Was there an adjustment to the way you guys run things that you had not seen before? In the I don't know. Or you or have to ask him. It's a good question. What, what is it? First off, apologies to Trey Hill. I know the video is going to be posted, so i got to apologize to Trey Hill for getting on the roster. Secondly, um, what does it say about Orlando that he's already working out and wanting to kind of, and knowing that he probably wants to change and want to get better and he wants to start working on that more you know, immediately before that starts his formal workout? I don't know. You tell me what, what that what does that say. Is that a good thing that a guy's getting after? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just, yeah, I think. I mean, it's important to him. He's He wants to work on his craft and get better. I mean, it speaks volumes to me. I mean, you don't need to be an online coach to know that. <laughs> what makes a good leader on the offensive line like Ken? Uh, his ability to connect with a bunch of different personalities, uh, his ability to communicate. Um, he does that, obviously at his job as the center, but he's also a great communicator just amongst the, the his teammates in the locker room and in the meeting room. Um, a guy who could lead by example with his work ethic as well, not just vocally. So he, he kind of walks the walk and talks the talk, if you will. So a guy who's got a great experience and been around the block a few times. Um, hope that answers your question. Yeah, those are the biggest characteristics you've seen yeah, I mean, he's tremendous. Uh, he's one of the best I've been around as far as his communication skills at the line of scrimmage and, and in the meeting and, and, and knowing the little nuance and adjustments and getting guys on the same page. He, he's, he's excellent at that. Uh, and uh, I know guys love playing with him, so he's fun to coach. You talked about Cordell finishing the right way and in the right direction, but you started a little slow. What was, what was it like? What, where, what was the disconnect there? What, what was his struggle early on? I think he was overthinking and was just making his feet play a lot slower than what he's capable of. I mean, I kind of busted his chops a little bit. There was the one, uh, I don't know if it was a screen or something to uh, the rookie running back. He was like the second fastest guy in the league. Well, who's running right right behind him? It was Cordell. I'm like, where, where in the hell has that been for the first part of the season? <laughs> Let's go. When you're not thinking, look at you. Just yeah. quit thinking and play fast. Overthinking. So. I think that was kind of a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a, an opening for him there. But I know he's still developing, but is he an example of what you're trying to find during the draft process? Is Who, Cordell? Yeah. Yeah, he's got all those intangibles that you talk about. So he's, uh, he's wired the right way. He's, he's going to grind. He's a worker. I mean, you're, you're obviously looking for the most talented guy sure. that's got that, right? That's the guys that you're going to have to spend and invest a high draft pick to get. That's what everyone's looking for. It's, I mean, it's, everyone's looking for that. So, but yeah, no doubt he's the kind of, kind of guys we're looking for from a tangible standpoint, for sure. Did he get anything out of the interviews with the GM that were really helpful to get to see? Yeah, what he had? there's a couple questions you could ask him, and that might, you know, open the door to explore other things or. It's always fun to ask them who do they think was the best player they played against or the best defense, who was the worst, and here are their explanations for why. And then, you know, if you haven't watched that game, you go back and watch that game, obviously. But just maybe you're just getting to learn a little bit more what makes them tick. It's kind of a good introduction to kind of help set up some of your Zoom calls and stuff or visits you may have in the future. Do you have a favorite question? Uh, I have a couple of favorite questions. I won't go into what those are, but they are – compliant with <laughs> NFL standards. I, I can tell you some stories from my playing days, yeah. but that's, that they're very compl compliant. That were not compliant. <laughs> that were not compliant. <laughs> Time for change. Do you have a favorite interview that you did get with a guy that kind of blew you away? Mm. No, nothing jumps out at me, to be honest with you. No, I don't, I don't have a name for you. I'm not yeah. going to give you. Oh, man. Great. We appreciate it. Thank Frank. you. Frank. Frank.